so I'll just give a brief of me. I mean, uh, I I generally come, I've, I've started my career as an analyst in a private equity firm. Uh, worked uh, through that company for almost eight ten years. Uh, when I exited, as as mentioned, I exited as, as an uh, executive director on the board. Uh, I have roughly more than actually 40 investments uh, under my belt. Uh, I've also taken my couple of companies public. Um, God has been lucky and I had a good boss who gave me such an opportunity to uh, be able to do so many things. Uh, finally, I've, I've also worked with, by the way, with Indescent Bank. Uh, I have uh, set up their entire division for SME advisory under business banking. Uh, after that, I started working and, you know, uh, and trying to mentor startups and arrange financing for them. Uh, finally, realizing that uh, there's a huge shortfall of what kind of financing the Indian startups and Indian ecosystem is getting. Uh, so finally, I decided that probably the time has come to launch my own first Made in India fund. Uh, so I have uh, recently, we've been uh, licensed by SEBI under their AIF Category 1 VCF. We just got the license in August this year, so we would be starting our deployments by early January 2019. January, February, we'll be starting our deployment. Uh, coming on to this, a small, small brief about the company. As I said, we are a sector, uh, we are a sector agnostic fund. Uh, we we are looking. The fund is called the Special Approach ISS Special Opportunity Fund. Uh, the fund takes takes look at almost uh, as small as 50 lakh rupees to almost 20 crores of rupees ticket size. Uh, we are sector agnostic, uh, but uh, there is one very specific term and which which we uh, promote is which is called profitability. I'm sure all of us know, but most of us probably don't follow in the startup ecosystem right now, uh, which, which may, by the way will be my main criteria in today's presentation. Uh, so that's uh, Indian Startup Factory, our fund, uh, one thing that we again believe on is uh, the time value of money. We are not the kind of fund which would uh, sit, make uh, 20, 30 investments in a year and sit on them and probably wait for 15, 20 years for exit or 10, 10 to 15 years for exit and probably one or the 20 deals making making us money. I, as I said, we come. I come from a private equity background. We like working with the company. Uh, we, you know, we like giving them corporate uh, uh, strategy help. We uh, help them get getting tie ups in place. A lot of things. So we we are very hands on with our investments, uh, and we pick up our investments in a way where you know our exit period is uh, approximately between five to seven years at max. The five year, as soon as we hit our fifth year of investment, we would be looking at uh, exiting uh, the business. Uh, the reason being. Uh, as I said, time value of money, money in hand today is uh, much better than having, uh, you know, prospects of having it later on. So, uh, as, uh, so time value of money is there, then uh, investment strategy, um, similar to what all VC say, so let me not waste my time on that. Uh, what happened here? There's a slide missing. No worries, uh, that's fine. Uh, so there's this one thing I, I really wanted to discuss and I do that at a lot of startup uh, events. Uh, I, I, uh, I am a promoter of profitability. Uh, I've, I've seen there is a lot of challenges uh, that startups face today for raising finances. Uh, the reason being, uh, from my perspective again, uh, the reason being I think these days all of us, all of our youngsters are doing, uh, you know, or looking at a dream or trying to do a startup, uh, they start building up model, business models. Uh, business models, according to me, are not businesses. They are basically an Excel file. I can pretty much sit here for next 20 minutes and make a, give me an idea and I can make a business model. Uh, I think the problem, uh, the challenges that startups are facing is they've seen so much of amount of money coming into the companies. Uh, and at crazy valuations, at crazy valuations, for instance, today Paytm, Paytm cannot get listed on uh, Bombay Stock Exchange. I mean, do we know that? There's no exit. They, they're losing 1,000 crores every quarter. How is it happening? And still a 20 billion, or what, 12 billion dollars? So valuation 16, last? 16 billion. 16 billion. How? Where is this money? If the, if the company is losing money, how are investors putting in such big valuations? Any any ideas? Anybody can, you know. Let's let's try to make it a little interactive. It's the rat race. Value value. Rat race. That's that's perfect. Right. 
Sorry. The value of so-called customer will stick with them. Whether they no, will or no, not, no, it's only cashbacks. It's only cashbacks. True, true, truth of up to a certain extent, yes. Well, uh, what I see is, uh, as one of the gentlemen said, rat race. We need to understand how the VC's model work, uh, you know, across. I mean, VC for India is still new. VC is still evolving. Private equity is still not there, really. So, we need to understand uh, how the VCs work. VCs, uh, in, and typically from Silicon Valley, most of them are from you know Silicon Valley. They, and what we are doing here is, we have basically been, for the last eight years, we've just been replicating them. Without understanding the how the economics of India works, how the companies in India work, and we're just trying to replicate that. That is what is leading to, know, to these crazy valuations. Uh, secondly, uh, rat race, as, as one, one person said, VCs have uh, worldwide started working on a uh, what what so called flavor of the season. Uh, somebody is kaaj kisi ne usme paisa dala food panda mein oh sorry food QSR mein every single VC will start running into that, right? If somebody puts into AI, every single VC will start putting into that. So and because of that, a lot of entrepreneurs will all, will also start thinking, yeah, I should do something in this thing only. I should not. The creativity goes completely. As ye sector funding ora, let's do something about this. Right? So this, this doesn't work long term. This doesn't work. Now every single VCs, if you see, uh, oh, let me give you a little example of how do we run? How do we make our bread and butter? I mean, we are so called, you know, in the startup thing arena, we are called gods because we, we can give money, which is not the case. It's not our money. It's investors money. Right? So all the big names which you guys hear, Sikoy, Seth, anybody, right? I hope nobody's from there yet. <laughs> but anyhow, so any big name. So we are basically the fund managers, right? Uh, fund managers basically that there are people across the world who are because of our credibility, our track record, our etc. etc. would give us money to manage, right? We are managing funds, right? Uh, some of the VCs are a little different like us. Uh, mine is a family run as well. Uh, so, so but how, how, how does a typical VC will make money? A typical VC will make money in two ways. One is the management fees, right? Which we get to manage the funds, right? The second is the profit share, which we get once we divest the investment. So divesting part is a later one, right? Let's forget somebody will fail, somebody else. The management fees is the main thing which, you know, keeps our bread and butter going, right? And the kind of expensive lifestyles every fund manager, say, you know, uh, splurges. So, yeah, so that's that. How does the fund managing management fees uh, come? Management fee comes when you show your investors, your LPs, that are NAVs. Our net asset values, our NPVs are very good. We are, we are, our company we invested at 100, 100 crore valuation today, it's six months and it's already at 200 crores. So as an investor, seeing that he's not there on the ground, seeing that he's like, yeah, 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 so more money, more money. So the, till that time, the VC fund manager can keep raising money, he will be getting his management fees. Now in order to do that, they have to show a good NAV. Now in order to do that, they have to do, a, yeah, they have to basically increase the valuations. For me, most of them are paper valuations, and that's exactly how the entire market crumbles, right? Uh, we have seen, uh, you know, market crumbling as big as Merrill Lynch, Blackstones, huge institutions, all crumbled. Of course, a different set of business, but everybody who starts building up their businesses on a model which is not sustainable will crumble. So coming back to the valuation, these crazy valuations, the expectation of crazy valuations, is it's something that you know every startup should not think about. They, you guys should not think about what valuation we'll get. You should you guys should think about how we will make it, how will we make the money work? One. And two, how much equity do I want to keep? Right? There's there's a concept in our field called need-based financing. Right? A lot of time what happens is uh, a startup, will, you know, if, if VC VC would have a ticket set key. Uh, we, we invest only a minimum ticket size of $2 million or a $1 million, right? But the startup doesn't need that, right? If the startup doesn't need that, so the VC should be flexible enough. Of course, there, there is, there's a lot of theory behind that, but I'm just talking from the perspective of our ecosystem. The VC, VCs uh, should be flexible enough to offer the financing that is required. If a person is requiring, requiring $500,000, I'm giving him a $1 million, right? He will take it, but he will dilute even more right at the same valuation right finally that is not the end of the money we the, the startup would require to raise more money going ahead right finally what happens 
all these so called unicorns of india 5% is what the promoters own and valuation would be pro sachin bas mr bansal got a very good exit he was the hero according to me in the entire deal he and uh, softbank uh, another discussion another day but 5 billion dollars on paper right people promote us 5 billion but where is the cash where is the cash in the company they are taking investors money and paying off so that's that's how this whole whole game is you know getting screwed if i may if i'm allowed to use that word right so, and i i completely believe in the opposite way i believe in creating businesses which are sustainable they are companies and uh you know which which generate actual profits so when we float our term sheets there is uh, there is a clause which basically says that the company has to be operationally profitable as of the day we are investing or between the 12 to 24 months of our investment because other than that we will not be investing and there will be certain criteria where we will just get out if not if not happening that way so so yeah so uh, pearls of wisdom as we say think about building a business not on the excel think of building a business what you really want to do right how you want to do it have passion about it right uh, i have made a stride uh, to make a some one slide try to be funny here in the end so way forward uh, basically don't forget a person decides to do business to create wealth there's a difference between wealth and money anybody can explain the difference between wealth and creating wealth and creating money notional and actual Yes, notional and actual. Uh, the other part, just to add on to that, opex is uh, wealth is capex, or money is opex. It's like operations. <laughs> oh, so we, your knowledge is your wealth. Money is heart. Wealth. So wealth, wealth is for me. Why? Why I have kept it here. Wealth for me is something that you create for long term, for your generations. Towards creating a business which is profitable, as I said, uh, investor put in their investment to get returns, and return can only come by profits, as I explained. Uh, Ah, this one is good. Uh, if you take investors' uh, fund losses, if you make the fund lose money, uh, say when I say fund here, I refer to VCs, right? Uh, you will. Can you create a market? The reason being that the uh, VCs' fund losses, I can't create a word. You know, but in case in case father can do that. यहाँ पे case थोड़ा different है. यहाँ पे hard है. So another new word is more than about valuation. Right. Normally, you say it's a multiple of your, you know, profits or your company. Yes. Yeah. It's a valuation. Paying about ten thousand dollars a year, a month from the mall, and I think. Yeah. Never lost money. And by the end, probably twenty years down the line, these will be the two companies who will be the only two companies. Owning all the majority technologies in the world, both them together. That's my my opinion. I might be wrong. Well, I would have Amazon to it also. Yeah, now Amazon is yes. I think they have it. Yes, Amazon. true. Yes, Amazon Amazon is not far behind. But comparing to these two guys, from for me, the creativity which Amazon has lacks a lot as compared to Google and uh, Facebook. They are Amazon is acquiring a lot, lot of technologies. But Facebook is missing. <laughs> I'm not a very I'm not a very fit technology fan honestly. Uh, so I and I'll cover that also. I don't like sold technology run businesses. I really don't because I believe we created the technology. Now technology is running us, right? So tomorrow, if something goes wrong in the local world, right? If the system tells us one plus one is eleven, we will say, "Ha, ah, one plus one is eleven." Because we are run by technology today. Nobody will have the capacity to think. Nee, one plus one should has always been two. So that is that is how dependent we are becoming on technology. Not averse to technology, but uh, technology should. In fact, yesterday I was at uh, this uh, Mumbai Veritas that they had. So there I was talking to an investor. Just discussing. He said normally it is like. I invest, goes and invest. That's what my fourth point is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly what five, you know investors. I mean fund managers. I mean SoftBank came in at a valuation of 12 billion last year in August. This year, before completing one one and a half years, they got out at a 19 billion dollar valuation entirely. जो उनके original investors से उनका अभी तक principal भी शायद बनने आया है. 
The point here was, of course, see, a lot of investment also happens through networks, right? Probably, this is my presumption that SoftBank has also, SoftBank is also, uh, invest, has a lot of pool of investors who are into Walmart and all of these. So they probably had some insider thing. I don't know. One and a half times, amazingly, I would love to do something like that also myself. So yeah, so this is exactly what happens uh, when, when fund managers a question. We used to always say, I, I know, there's a question, have you guys heard of a term we commonly use for owner-driven businesses, old business houses? Ambutana, there is this word, do you know that word? Hindi, Hindi, Hindi. Lala, Lala. Lala, that's correct. Right? So my, my, my thing of putting it here is uh, very precisely <coughs> This. So, run. Uh, why do we call these businesses Lala business? <laughs> because they're the best business. No, they're they are they're stingy. They are stingy with their capital expenditure. Yes. No, they are stingy with so, their business. Lala, business. Lala business is not. It's it's not a, a, a business. Ko ko Lala nahi kar hai. It's, it's the management style. It's run by a by a person. But his mind is right. He is doing running his business for making money. Right. So my advice is do the business for what a Lala does. Probably don't manage it the way he does. Uh, sorry, I'll have to just open it again. So this is something uh, you know. Last final slide from my side. Uh, this is something we. So this was the slide which I was explaining. Okay, it's gone. So this is this is something. Yes, I missed on this. Uh, business, we look at uh, we look at startups. Everybody would say scalable on a TM market. We have to capture the market. We have to have the market share. Scalable, 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 scalable. And that is why we end up burning the money because we will spend on marketing, excess on marketing. Because how will we get scalability unless people we have you know we have eyeballs to us, right? So we spend a lot of marketing, advertising here, there. We burn literally burn out the cash which we have. Without realizing that we are fortunate enough to have that kind of cash, right? So, and business will never flourish. So this I have gone through. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, in a nutshell, in fact, uh, I was interacting with one of the companies which we are in, 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 a, in a student living space. We are finalizing them. So, you know, we made a group. So, I was chatting to them and something came to my mind. Trust us that we can judge it. Uh, what what is passion? Anybody? Passion for us is not enthusiasm. It's not how excitingly you are showing uh, pitching, right? It's not it's not enthusiasm, right? Passion is something when we are talking to you guys. What I need to understand, or probably my team would understand, is how deep the knowledge of your business do you have? Do are you capable enough to run it, right? Money is a byproduct, but are you capable enough to run it? Passion comes with the knowledge. That is how you will be expressing when you know about your business. That is what will be coming across. Enthusiasm is completely different. So that is one. Age is never a barrier. So we have uh, we have a startup uh, whose promoters are 46, 47, 48. We have another startup who's, who's, who has five promoters having age um, average age of 21. So age for starting up is not a barrier. If you like doing something, if you want to do something, do it. Honesty is the best policy. We at ISF believe mistakes, wrong calls, blunders, etc. do happen. You know, again, uh, sorry to use the word, shit does hit the fan. It does. It does a lot of time. It hits in our business too. Right? But the point here is that we need to accept it, acknowledge it with the team, make everybody understand, not hide it. Right? It will be much more easier to learn and move on. <coughs> right? And this will also kind of build your own team's stickiness. Um, again, uh, management one on one. Uh, all should know strengths and weaknesses of the team, uh, so that we we can complement each other and not judge each other, right? So basically, I wanted to convey to them that they, because there are a lot of a lot of startups these days have more than one or two founders, right? So it's always nice to know strengths and weaknesses of each other because you formed a team to work together, not to compete with each other, right? So acknowledge. Strengths and weaknesses and complemented. Don't judge. 
ego should be kept aside and accomplishments that can be achieved together should gain priority disagreements are good and healthy but finally we should be mature enough to go with with what majority of the team thinks and even if it fails right be with the team don't say that i maine to wo kaha tha because that is the point where your startup will fail right be true to your business uh, let's face it we did not start to do our own stuff just because it's cool but to make money by taking all the team together otherwise all of us can have jobs find the thing can be bought right but people is what we invest in first and then followed by what they are trying to achieve thank you that's our email address you can get in touch